This is a very rare guitar. There are only a few around right now. It came from the mind and the heart and the soul of a gentleman named Andy Powers. Andy is going to show us this guitar, and I'm going to show you how it sounds. This is not a sponsored video. I'm not getting a fee, and the guitar is only a loner. <laughs> One of the most trippy things with it for, for a lot of players is that it's a hollow body guitar. It looks like a solid body because there's no sound hole in it, but it's actually totally hollow. It's made of solid woods and then I hollow the thing out. The back side is made of a kind of a medium weight ash. It's, it's uh, urban harvested wood. And then the top is a solid piece of maple that's been braced almost like an acoustic guitar. <laughs> Long story short, this pickup is technically a single coil pickup. In this case, you get to use that cover of the pickup as a noise barrier, oh. kind of a Faraday shield. So they run pretty quiet, but you can use that to influence how the magnet is and coil are listening, we'll call it, to the string. And so you end up with this sound that's clear and warm at the same time. So I'm using a real modern rare earth style magnet, got a neodymia magnet, because there's a very strong, powerful type of permanent magnet. <laughs> You see different pieces like these knobs. Uh, they were originally inspired by a surfboard maker friend of mine. It's not different than uh, like the Fordite that hot routers used to make dashboard knobs out of. Fordite was the leftover like alkyd or acrylic resins. After you know a series of cars were sprayed in a an assembly line, every couple of weeks you go chip out all over spray. You've got this massive, cr cool, multicolor swirly material. Wow. People would make stuff out of it. Well, surfboard makers end up with the same stuff. You know, you're glassing surfboards in a traditional way, and it all drips off the board onto the floor. Yeah. Well, after a while, you, go, you got something you can make out of that. Right. And so, I thought, well, this is really cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually make some surfboard stuff. I'll put that on there. So that's what the knobs are. You take influences like the, this, uh, these pickups I engine turned. You know, so an engine turning, that was a, a style of metal finishing that you saw on like the, the dashboard insert for a 32 Ford. You'd see it on, you know, like World War II era airplanes. Yeah. You know, you'd see it on hot rodders. Yeah. You know, they'd want to trick out an engine or the firewall, you know, behind their engine or something. But Ford did it on a bunch, as trim pieces, you know, I think it's fun. So there's a lot of that kind of influence in it including the colors. Like, these are col all colors for cars that I've either had or loved or wanted to have, you know? Yeah. This particular one is a 55 introductory year Thunderbird color. It's called Aquatone Blue originally. I just always liked that color. That one is a Porsche color. That one's a color called Signal Yellow. You know, there's... And then you gave us sort of a traditional flamey, yeah, a yeah, that flamey one, top right there. That yeah. one is a curly maple, yeah. figured maple top. I don't know what to call that color. Yeah, it's just it's more of a guitar. It was like a bright blue. I thought it was kind of fun to do, you yeah. know. So in about 30 seconds, I'm going to demonstrate sound-wise one of the great virtues of this guitar, I think. But here's another virtue. This is a camshaft. See how the strings are on different sized rollers? This being the biggest, that's pretty big. That's smaller, that's a little bigger. They're all different. It keeps it 
in true pitch as you bend it down. The chords stay in tune. So in a few seconds, I'm going to play a piece of music on this where I show another virtue. Take a listen to what I'm about to play and check out the clarity and the shadings of tone I can get with the pick and pick dynamics. But where it really gets great is this last inch before the bridge. When you do the Ponticello thing, the tonal variation in this area is actually pretty great and pretty usable. If you want to support this channel and you need guitar lessons, click the link below and take the free trial in the masterclass. I like the basic mechanism that was an in, kind of inspired by Bigsby. Mm -hmm. I like that concept. And so I designed this, this version where all of the strings have been compensated, for, kind of in the way that you would compensate for, you know, string stretching when you press a note down. Okay. I've compensated it so that I can maintain real close to relative pitch as I use the device, we'll call it. <laughs> if I'm going to do double stop bends, I don't have any pitch droop. Right. It'll always come back to good pitch, like it was a hard tail, something like that. It just you get this neat uh, effect at the same time. You go, well, I like how it feels. It's smooth, rubbery, like, but it always comes back yeah, to the same place. It's That's very, great. It's like a trim that has a lot of empathy, you know? It's like real, real forgiving that way. Sometimes I think that our era, this era right now, is the best time ever for the electric guitar, for effects, for amps, for anything electric guitar. And it's because the vintage aesthetic has been brought forward so well. A lot of the new gear we use these days, to me, sounds as good as, if not better than, its vintage counterpart. And this in no way negates the fact that some of the best Les Pauls ever made were made in 1959, and that these late 60s Marshalls just sound awesome. So Andy's gonna tell us about how he went back to the origin of electric guitar and pioneers like Leo Fender and Les Paul and brought the elements forward to design his own instrument where everything is intentional. But if I were to be alive back in the, call it 40s, in, in the area that I live in and grew up in, that was really the birthplace of electric guitar. I mean, at one point you had guys like Leo Fender and Paul Bigsby, you had Les Paul, who's more of a performer, inventor. They were all living within a few miles of each other up here in the Los Angeles area, maybe a little south of here. There were no parts catalogs to buy stuff from. There was no preconceived notion of what electric guitar was. Well, what if I went through those same steps? And so I started mixing my love of cars and my love of surfboards and surf design all of that stuff put things. into put into a really neat unique musical instrument it's a sound that's different than the other guitars that i have and love but it's a sound that i would like to hear in the context of a song one of the things that's that is a real trip even with the hardware and the pickups and everything if i took the strap button off mm -hmm. It'll actually balance oh, that's on great. a table. Like, wow. The strap button will throw it. Did that happen by accident? I figured I was getting pretty close to a good balance <laughs> front to back and so, you know yeah. everything. But I didn't quite <laughs> expect it to be that close. In this case, we're blending these influences. You go, well, that's something I that's just a fresh sound. Yeah. It's right. like it's a, a very musically useful sound to me. What's special about the neck? The neck is the neck is unique in that it gets put together with unique materials in a different way. Right now I'm using a Hunter and Rosewood fretboard. So it's a very dense form of Rosewood. The way the fretboard is coupled with the peg head, that's a bit different. It's, it's kind of a, a bit of a subtlety, but the nut doesn't pierce through those two and they're glued together. And so oh, this man. neck ends up with a unique ring, almost like it was a marimba bar. The headstock is designed to also accommodate that. So the length of pass, the passive length of string matters. You know, we don't think of this 
these sounds as influencing a guitar, and they they do. Okay, they matter. You know, almost any piano designer or piano tuner will pay a lot of attention to that passive length, the non-speaking length of string, and so the distance between the backside of the nut and the tuning post that has an influence in in what happens here. Hey guys, a lot of the time YouTube will bring you my videos even though you're not subscribed. If you get the chance, click the subscribe button and ring the bell.